I don't know. All right, we are live. Hello, everybody. Hi. I am here with Anna Levely, who is one of my very good friends and also uh, one of my fellow independent authors. We're here with Anna Levely, who is awesome. one of my very good friends. <laughs> is and my, also, do I uh, have it my open on my thing? Authors. I do. I'm going to turn that off now. <laughs> so um, why don't you tell us a little bit about your book first? <laughs> um, sure. So my book is about um, people who live about a thousand years in the future around. And um, basically, it's a dystopian sci-fi novel uh, with a very dystopian heavy theme of, um, of basically, yeah, she, Atlia, the main character, she doesn't know all of these really horrible secrets about her society. She really believes in it and loves it. And then you slowly learn throughout the book all these things that are just not okay. And um, and yeah, it's a fun ride. It's, there's adventure and love, and there's also like sorrow. There's some deep like some deep issues in there that we are even dealing with today. And yeah, so that's my book. <laughs> <laughs> so. If I weren't already a vegetarian, this totally would have turned me into one. Um, so why don't you elaborate on the vegan message and trying to get people to question the consumption of animal products? Sure, yeah, so I um, originally wrote this. I mean, I think it's a story for everyone, not just vegans, but like everybody. And I think the reason why is like the crux or the inspiration was a vegan inspiration because I thought there was something, there's nothing out like this that was like a real story. Like there's Animal Farm and there's like uh, some other books that kind of have this issue, but there wasn't really like a, a story, like a story you could like fall in love with and want to follow and go through. And um, the vegan inspiration, I mean, it happened because I am vegan and in our daily lives, we see these things. I mean, this is actually pretty much like a, how vegans feel in our daily lives. And I think, um, you know, family members often don't consider that or friends, you know, they're like, oh, you're being sensitive. But I think when you read it from the point of view of, you know, Atlia, I think you really connect with the character and you start going like, oh, wait a second. This is, I can understand why they're like this, you know. Um, and also it talks about the current industry today and might make you think as well. Um, yeah. And so that's kind of how the vegan theme came about. Well, that is really cool. Um, so you tell us of a very far distant future world. So um, with it's like not only technologically more advanced than the world as we know it, but also just very different in a lot of ways. Um, so what are some of the, um, like even people's names are nothing like what they are in the world as we know it. So um, what made you decide to uh, to give characters really crazy names that are nothing like the world as we know it and even have terms like, you know, instead of mother and father, they're like really different words. Um, what was the sort of the in inspiration for that? Well, I really wanted to do it from the point of view of Atlia. And um, I, I said it, you know, beyond our time because I imagined how long would it take for this community to realize these problems? And then also how long could they hide them for? Um, so I was thinking like, you could hide them for a pretty long time actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, and so I imagined like, okay, so if this is that far in the future. Like what would that future look like? Like what would we fathom? And you know, it's kind of fun is that like, so this is the first book in the series. But then I also was like, oh my God, there's so much in this world that I want to build off of. So there's short stories that I'm writing on my website. So there will be giving like more background to like the story if people are like into that and they want to read more about like the world of beasts. Um, but yeah, like there's just, there's like so much you can do with it. There's just so much. And there's actually a lot of intricacies. No, I mean, me being the author knowing the whole series, I'm like, of course, I'm like, oh, this is so cool. Um, <laughs> and I can't wait to share all the secrets with everyone. But in the first novel, I did have to make sure it was it was set in Atlia's point of view. It was set in, you know, like what she was doing and how she kind of has to keep going like throughout the entire book. She really has like barely any rest time, like maybe like two, two parts of the book. She's like kind of resting. But most of the book, she's like kind of she's uh, she's got a lot of things to do, <laughs> you know. 
Yeah, it's a very action-packed and very <laughs> fast-paced book, which is a good thing, I think, in my uh, opinion. <laughs> um, so let me think here. Um, what, uh, because you did mention that there are some things, um, some things in your life that did influence the story in a way. Is there anything or any of those things that you can elaborate on, I guess? Um, yeah, I mean, different, like, you know, especially veganism. I mean, there's a lot of that that I have influenced my life, you know, um, in a direct way. And then also, I mean, being queer, that's also um, fairly new to me, as I know it's new to you as well. And like, well, not very new to you. You're, you're like, you're like a pro <laughs> now. Me, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Um, you know, like, and, um, and like, there, there was something about writing that and being able to kind of live that through Atlia that was really satisfying and um, like helpful. And I feel like another thing too was there's, there's some really difficult scenes in there that definitely pull from my trauma. Um, because I have PTSD. Um, and so some of those scenes are, they're me, some of them. Um, and then some of them aren't, some of them, you know, some of them are just made up, but from the, you know, using my pain as fuel, I guess, to make something good. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Definitely good to use thing, use your pain as fuel, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So let me see, do you have any other thoughts about your book that you would like to, um, throw out there? I mean, I think it's it's fun because it's a first book, but again, it doesn't tell everything. And I, I can't wait to like share the whole story with everybody. I think that's gonna be really cool is once everybody sees like how it all comes together, they're gonna just be like, whoa, you know? Like this is way bigger than we thought it was, you know? Like this is like a drop, you know? It's like the first Harry Potter book where you're just like, oh, okay, cool, you know? And then all of a sudden it's like this whole world comes about. Um, that's such a good comparison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah. And then I, I want to interview you. Okay. <laughs> and your wonderful novel, Unicorn Hunting. And I want to know what your inspiration was. What was your inspiration for the book? Well, oddly enough, I kind of just thought that it would be cool to have something about unicorn hunters, because that's not something you really think of. No. I mean, it is. It's something that a lot of people kind of think about in passing, like, oh, of course, like, um, unicorns can't hurt virgins, so wouldn't they hunt them? Wouldn't they be the ideal people to hunt them? But it's also something that you don't think about in much the same way, <laughs> just because yeah. um, unicorns are like nice and people are, you know, people just think they're cute and cuddly. And so I just started thinking like, that would be really cool. And I so I started thinking like, what kind of setting should this take place in? Should it just be a fantasy or should it be like, I very briefly thought it could be in modern day, but then I thought, no way. Like, and then even then, like what kind of fantasy world? And then the whole thing just kind of came together pretty quickly from just the, the idea, the, like, like the barest inkling of the idea, basically. Wow. That's, That's really, really cool. cool. Um, um. What else was I thinking? I, I'm kind of hearing myself echo, just by the way, just to let you know. We but, um, yeah. but <laughs> we've been having trouble with technology lately. So yes, we have. We tried to do this for anyone new watching. We tried to do this on Instagram yeah. and we tried to do this on Facebook and yep. it didn't work. And nope. I don't know, on Instagram it worked, but we couldn't hear each other at all. And yep. everyone else could hear. Anna and not me. And I was like, well, I can't even hear anything. Like, I don't know what's going on. Um, but yeah, so that was kind of weird. But anyway, so here we are on YouTube. Yes, here we are. And now back to unicorn hunting. So I, I was, oh, so I was actually really intrigued by the whole virgin thing because I, I actually didn't know that. I mean, I'm guessing it's in Greek mythology or mythology just in general that like unicorns and virgins like go together or yeah, you know pretty much I mean it kind of depends on what you read in some places it's like um oh they can't hurt them or oh virgins are the only ones who can see the unicorns it just depends on what what it is that you're like what sort of source material you're looking at but I'm not sure how the um 
unicorns and virgins even going together it originally came about <laughs> because yeah. unicorns originally came about because um somebody saw a an antelope with a missing horn and thought oh no it's a unicorn and somebody else saw and then one day marco polo saw a rhinoceros and said oh wow unicorns are nothing like um people have been telling me it's <laughs> like rolling in the mud what's it doing and <laughs> that's pretty funny so so where did you um so a lot of the unicorns have very interesting personalities. What would you say they're like the king's personality is like? I don't know. I mean, the unicorns are pretty, um, they're sort of more of a hive mind than than like individuals in a way in, my, in this book. And so they don't have like personalities per se, but then the unicorn king is like the unicorn that's in charge and makes the decisions for all of the other unicorns. And he like, it's kind of, Cal has a very interesting relationship with the unicorn king because it's a unicorn that kind of cares about her as a person, but at the same time is just using her as like a tool to get his kind to their world. And okay. so it's so it's pretty it's pretty odd that way um, that they do rely on each other in a lot of ways, but they're not like friendly. So it's, it's begrudgingly kind of. You would, <laughs> would you say it's like kind of like a begrudging relationship? Sort of, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, because I noticed Cal is kind of like open to it, like, okay, like, I guess, like, this is what I'm going to do. She you, know? Wanted to, you know, she never particularly wanted to hunt the unicorns in the first place. She's kind of just there by default and doesn't know what she's doing. So right. <laughs> That's funny. And so um, where would you say you are in this book? Like, did you write yourself into any of these characters? Well, I think there are elements of myself in several of the characters. I mean... Um, I mean, with Cal being the main character, I mean, her personality and mine are not much alike at all. But yeah. um, but through her, I did kind of write my experience having experienced my experience having experienced um, like having having extreme feelings for a girl for the first time and discovering like why that was happening. And mm -hmm. then I mean, in the character of Sura, I mean, she's kind of the whole reason that she becomes such a crazy person, um, for lack of wanting to spoil anything too much, um, is basically because she's been the awkward third friend when her friends didn't intend for her to be that at all. Right. But it's her own perception that she she finds herself to be like that random third wheel every time she's hanging out with her friends. But she's actually not. She's Cal's best friend. And that that other girl, she's just Cal's crush. Like she's not her best friend. But Sura is her best friend. But she Aww. feels like since she's not um she's not adrian she's just kind of that random chick and so i always felt like a random chick in many of my friendships and so i guess in that way i guess that's something that a lot of us can kind of empathize <laughs> with too oh definitely yeah absolutely and i think um yeah i really liked the the tension between those two that was uh really interesting like i, I mean like honestly i think it was like the most shocking part to me like with the book it was like what um, and then also, I wanted to talk about your very explicit scene in your book. <laughs> that what, what? Is, everybody has to read. I'm not going to say what it is, but um, like, I, I want to know what, what kind of like drove you to that point. What was like, okay, this needs to be in here. This is like an important you know, part of this. It was just something that had to happen because it affects the rest of the plot. And so yeah. it didn't come from anything that I was thinking at the time, but it is one of those scenes where I remember exactly where I was when I wrote it and just the whole deal. Like I remember I was sitting in my college dorm and I was typing out that scene and going, this is a very weird scene. What are, <laughs> what's my mom going to think? <laughs> like, good thing my grandparents are never going to read this. They'd think I was crazy. Like, you know, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> I think <laughs> all writers, an author, 
you know, but as an yeah. author, you have to let go of your responsibility yeah. to what is going on on the page. You can't think to yourself, oh no, what's what are people gonna think of me um, when they see this and all of that stuff. And, but you, it's something that's so hard to do. Oh yeah. <laughs> I didn't exactly. realize just how hard that was to do until I wrote that. I was, I was really good. I was really surprised. Um, I was surprised by Sarah. I was like, really? Whoa. <laughs> you know, like, and if you haven't read the book yet, you should totally go and buy the book right now on Amazon. Like, absolutely. Cause that's just, just even just to hear that story. It's amazing. Um, and then also, um, one of the things I was wondering too was like, so are you like excited for the second one? Like, are, are we looking towards the future here or? Yeah, I mean, the second one is about halfway done being written at this point. I was really hoping to get a completed draft of it by the end of 2018, which may still happen, totally possible. Um, so yeah, and it's very, very awesome because it is very different from the first one. Ooh, I like that. That sounds fun. cool. Yeah, because it's not going to be in the same, necessarily the same place. Like the characters are all going to have developed and everything um, in because of the events of the first book. They're not all, they're all not quite the same people. And then also some, you know, a lot of things. We have a lot of new characters showing up and, you know, our main characters get betrayed by new people and have to, you know, fight some new people. <laughs> okay. Oh boy, I can't wait. Um, and, and so who's your favorite character? If you can pick one character. Gosh, um, that's kind of difficult. But <laughs> I mean, obviously I like Cal because she's the main character and she <laughs> is such a typical um, such a typical teenager, and I think that she's great and and complex in so many ways. Um, but I think that um, I really like Sura a lot as well, especially with um, the role that she plays in the second book. Um, she because she's developed so much as a person pretty much this entire time. Um, so I think that in writing the second book, I'm starting to really like Sura extra much. It's really wow, that's surprising. That's that's intriguing. Yeah, and, and really, you know, at the beginning of the first book, she was never the type of person who would stand up for herself or anything, and now now she's kicking butt. Like by yeah. the end of the first book, even so. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder though if she's gonna kick butt in a good way or a bad way. Though I guess we'll just have to see. <laughs> or possibly <laughs> both. Oh no! Neither. Oh, neither. <laughs> Not doing anything. Um, and then I wanted to ask if you have any social issues that you feel like you've uh, included in your book in, in Unicorn Hunting. Well, I guess just, um, I mean, not necessarily social issues, I would say, but I mean, things like, you know, to question everything and don't just, you know, take your parents' word for, yeah, hunt unicorns. It's totally going <laughs> to give you a bright future or whatever. And then, um, I mean, and then also things like, um, I mean, I guess the in inequality that women still face today, I mean, even though we've come a long way since the type of world that unicorn hunting takes place in, I mean, in, in this world, in that world, um, women are highly underestimated to the oh, point yeah. no one even hires them. So they have to go hunt unicorns, which is kind of a bit more dangerous than most of them want to do. Um, so in a way, I mean, in a way, there are a lot of themes about equality of women. There is a dog scratching at my door. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> I hear him. He's like, let me in, mom. And he knows how to open doors. So he hopefully does. he won't open doors. So first in? This is going to be amazing. <laughs> he is your unicorn. <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> I almost put a horn on him for a video, but I didn't end up doing that. <laughs> you probably wouldn't have minded. You'd be like, okay. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. That's that's all the questions I had. Thank you so much for yeah, thank the you interview. So much too. I've got to post this on all the social media that we meant to earlier. Yeah. Oh, where do people follow you? What? Oh, how can people follow you on social media? List off your social media. Well, um, first of all, here on YouTube, and second of all, on my Twitter and my Instagram, um, all of that stuff. Why don't you tell us about your social media? Yeah, so you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, 
and Instagram and I think, and YouTube. I'm not as cool as Kat on YouTube or Roya, sorry. I'm so bad, we're, we're good friends. So it's just, you know, <laughs> I, I, get, I get confused. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not as like cool as Roya on, uh, on YouTube. But, um, but yeah, it's just under Anna Lovely, L-E-V-L-E-Y. A lot of people spell it lovely, believe it or not. Like Anna Lovely. Links like, will be down below in post production. That's of probably a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not really post production. It's not being edited in any particular way. It's just there. They don't need to know that. This is extremely complicated, all of this. <laughs> <laughs> Almost impossible. <laughs> awesome. Well, anyway, um, anything else you'd like to say? No, I think unicorn hunting is awesome and everyone should buy it. <laughs> All right. Well, I will see you guys soon with a new video. Go and follow Anna and pre-order her book. It comes out August 20th. And we will see you soon. Bye. Okay. Bye.